Hey guys, doing a video here on salt mixes. Um, going to kind of compare and contrast each of them by looking at the different compositions, uh, different attributes and things like that that they have. Uh, the title poses the question, which salt mix is best? Um, and to spoil it early, I would say the best salt mix is the one that you use consistently. Um, now, how you get to the one that you're going to use consistently may be a little different, and we're going to kind of look at some of that stuff in this video, because there's a lot of different attributes that are going to uh, determine which is the best salt mix for you. Uh, but again, once you pick one, stick with it, be consistent. The salt mixes that have been showing in the background here, these are the ones I'm going to review. I chose these because I know people that use every single one of them, and they've been successful with all of these. So looking at the uh, typical ranges for um, salt mixes and then what my salt mix is at. So uh, the typical calcium is 350 to 450, alkalinity 8 to 12, magnesium 1250 to 1350, strontium 8 to 10 and potassium 380 to 420 and then you can kind of see the salt mix that i use which i'll tell you at the end which one that is some of the additional benefits of salt mixes are the addition of major minor and trace elements it replenishes that stuff in your tank so when we're looking at some of the factors to consider first and foremost is obviously availability if you can't get it it's not the right salt water quality and type of system so the type of systems that we're going to look at or that you should consider when you're setting up or choosing your salt is uh whether you're running a fowler a mixed reef sps dominated softy frag system and what components are you having reactors and things like that what are you going to be dosing all those will help determine which is the best salt for you. And knowing that up front is going to help you pick which one you want to run with. So just a note here on water quality. RODI water is the best. RO water is the next. And tap water is the least best in my opinion. Um, although I've ran tanks with all three of these. So what I'm showing here is uh, RODI Buddy. Um, it's like 80 bucks on Amazon in case somebody doesn't isn't using RODI and they want to jump into it because of course this is what I use this is what I recommend everybody use and this is a simple cheap option to get into um, RODI water so you can kind of see here's so these is just some of the notes the RODI water um, how it rates on the total dissolved solids um, talking about the uh, additional filtration that it's going to go through um, with this system and uh, again more filtration because there's going to be um, several different chambers that it's going to go through um, to produce this uh, RODI water and the next is just RO water um, it removes the DI, so you can see the chamber in the front there is missing from this picture. This is only like five bucks less on Amazon, so you might as well get the DI added piece. It's only an additional five bucks, and it's just so much better. As you can see there from the total dissolved solids, instead of saying it takes them down to zero, RO is saying it only takes out 98%, so you're going to leave a couple total dissolved solids because you don't have that extra um, extra chamber to remove the rest of the total dissolved solids. So looking uh, at tap water here, um, these are just all the concerns that tap water brings. Um, and of course, that's why I said it's my least um, option. Now, treated tap water on a Fowler tank you're probably not going to have too big of issues but again in a reef tank you might have some issues so first one we're going to look at here is instant ocean salt a couple things to point out so um obviously they tote that they are used in in large scale operations um, such as aquariums and research facilities and things like that 
Um, it does note it's nitrate and phosphate free, so that is great. Um, it's formulated and contains all the major minor trace elements, obviously what we're looking for. And then they note at a 1026, you have 400 calcium and 1320 magnesium. Another thing I want to point out here is it does mention um, that you mix this with dechlorinated tap water. Doesn't mean you can't use RODI, and I would, would recommend you do, but this one specifically notes, hey, you can use tap water. You won't see that on any of the other ones except for Instant Ocean. Now, Instant Ocean here, the reef crystals, if you're having a reef tank, you might as well jump up and, and move to the reef crystals. Um, at least that would be my recommendation. So again, major minor trace elements. It notes that it has that extra calcium um, as well. And then it has this note here um, around the water quality. And it, new, it notes uh, neutralizing those trace metals um, often, found, often found in tap water. So um, neutralizing those trace metals, again, this is something that uh, I only found on Instant Ocean brand salts. I did not find it on other salts. So something to consider when you're thinking through what your water quality is going to be going in. So kind of looking at the packaging here, um, we want to look at, I'm going to look at this area. And so looking at kind of the makeup um, at 1026, the calcium is 455, the magnesium is 1345. And again, it notes here, metal detoxifier to neutralize traces of heavy metal often present in domestic water supplies. Again, so uh, Instant Ocean is noting that they do put some components in there to neutralize metals that can come in on um, water sources. So um, something to consider. And again, as I noted um, here, looking at the 1026, we're running a calcium of uh, 455 and a magnesium of 13. 45. So the next one we're going to look at here is the Red Sea Salt. Um, so just kind of looking here at a 1026, you can see that the calcium there is a 430, alkalinity is an 8, and magnesium is a 1280. So this salt as well also... Um, does all the same stuff. It, it, it has the trace elements that it's in there, um, enriched with fine minerals to replenish natural uh, seawater. So it has those minerals. It's uh, biologically balanced with the foundation of elements. It does not have nitrates or phosphates, uh, no toxic levels of heavy metals. Um, so, you know, all those good things that you wanna see on every single salt. So then when you're looking here, um, just kind of at point at 33, a salinity of 33, calcium is going to be 410, magnesium is going to be 1223, strontium 10, and potassium is going to be at 403. So just a little bit more in-depth items to look at, but it's at a 0.33, at a 33 parts per million on that one. And then, of course, you know, I also highlighted here again what it looks like at a uh, 35 parts per million, which is 1026. So then looking here at the um, Red Sea Coral Pro Salt. Again, lots of the same stuff. Um, it does have those major minor trace elements. Um, it does replenish um, those trace elements. Uh, so that's definitely a good thing. I, again, I found that in pretty much every salt. Um, same notes as kind of on the other one with the, you know, phos uh, nitrates and phosphates and not having any of that type of stuff. Uh, so same, same similar quality as to the previous Red Sea. And then looking at this one here at the 33 parts per million, your calcium goes up to 450. 
your magnesium goes up to 1390, your strontium drops to nine, and your potassium drops to 397. So just a few changes from the other version of the Red Sea salt. And so looking here at the RPM, another very popular salt. Um, again, it's noted that it's used in public aquariums, zoos, research institutes, uh, things like that, you know, kind of toting the vast use that it uh, has in, in different, um, different places that it's used. It does have all the major minor trace elements. Um, we're gonna find that on every single salt. And then this one, Notice it says nitrate, phosphate, and ammonia-free. You won't see the ammonia-free on every single one. It kind of comes and goes as I show these different, um, different salts. Not every one of them notes that. So looking at our makeup here, calcium 400 to 450, alkalinity 8 to 9, magnesium 13 to 1400, strontium 9, and potassium is at 400. And showing the note here, um, they note that they use RODI water to do their testing um, at manufacturing. So then we have the RPM high alkalinity version. Again, um, it's going to have all those um, major minor trace elements. And this is noting that it's formulated for higher alkalinity for increased SPS growth. Um, again, like I noted, all the major minor elements, um, the nitrate, phosphate, ammonia-free, and kind of looking at the parameters of this one. So um, calcium is 400 to 450, alkalinity is 10 to 12, magnesium is 13 to 14, and strontium is 9, and potassium is 400. I'm noting there that alkalinity of 10 to 12 versus uh, the regular fritz of 8 to 9. And then, of course, it notes again that it does the testing with RO DI water at the facility. All right, so now we're going to look at the Tropic Marine Classic. A um, couple notes on this one. So this one actually has a note that says it is ideal for... Uh, tanks with um, a high level of fish stock. It also notes that it, of course, has all the major, minor, and trace elements. Again, we're going to see that on every single salt. It also notes that it's um, suitable for fish only and reef aquariums. And then, of course, we have our note of nitrate and phosphate free. Again, like I noted, that ammonia note comes and goes on the salts as we kind of go through. Some say ammonia-free, some do not. And then the uh, calcium here, we got 380 alkalinity. We've got nine to 10. Magnesium is at 1260. And then we have a note here um, that when it's mixed, it has a pH that ranges from eight to 8.4. All right, so the next one we're going to look at is the Tropic Marine Pro Reef. All right, so this one does note um, it's optimal for fish only or reef aquariums. It does note the uh, addition of minor, major and minor elements. And it does note the nitrate and phosphate free. So when we're looking at the makeup of this one, it's saying 440 on the calcium, seven on the alkalinity, 1350 on the magnesium. And then just like the previous one, it has a note around pH and it says it mixes to eight to 8.4. And we see a note here saying that um, the mixing instructions say RODI water. So now we're gonna look at the bioactive of the Tropic Marine. This one has a note saying that it's designed for reef tanks as well as ultra low nutrient systems. And so this one also has a note here that says um, helps corals grow faster, more robust. And it's also great for fish as it ha uh, increases protection against damage to the mucous membranes. 
And then of course we have the note about nitrate phosphate free, uh, as well as the major minor trace elements. So looking at kind of the makeup, we have a calcium of 448, alkalinity of eight, and a magnesium of 1350. This one also has the same note around mixing uh, and getting a range of pH of eight to four. So now we're gonna look at C Chem Vibrant. Um, this one has the note for uh, all the major, minor, trace elements, um, plus it has the added potassium, and then it also notes that it's it's a, it's ideal for a reef environment. Um, it talks about the uh, calcium and, and strontium and, and things like that that um, are ideal for the reef environment. And then we also have um, nitrate phosphate free and then we have our makeup here. So uh, calcium 425 to 445, alkalinity three to four, magnesium 13 or 1250 to 1350, strontium eight to 10, potassium 500 to 550. And then it notes a pH of 8.4 to 8.5. And then the last one we have here is the Live Aquaria brand Reef Salt. This is the one I use. Um, of course, it notes here that it has um, all the major minor trace elements, enhanced calcium and magnesium levels. Um, it also has potassium and balanced ratios to support vibrant um, growth in reefs and fortified levels to aid in pH buffering. It also is the nitrate, phosphate, and ammonia free. And it notes use in fish only as well as reef aquariums, kind of a, a one in, in done for all different situations. Now, calcium is 400 to 450, alkalinity is eight to 9.5. The magnesium is 1350 to 1450. Um, the strontium is nine and the potassium is 400. Uh, so hopefully this helped. Uh, I'm going to leave you with some mixing directions for that's on my salt. Um, hopefully this helped give you some ideas on, on which salt is best for your system. Again, thinking through what your system's going to be before you pick your salt would be optimum. Uh, but once you pick your salt, stick with it, run with it. So give me a like, give me a subscribe, check out some more of my content, and I'll get more out soon. Thanks, guys.